yeah, yeah. there you go. There we go. Right into Listen it. to that sultry voice. Yeah. <laughs> You're the man. Yeah. All right, I'll do a quick intro. We'll dive into this thing. Go ahead. All right, welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Make sure you subscribe, give us a like, ring the bell, follow us on social media. Today on the podcast, I am honored to have the legendary Pete Valley, Big Elvis, oh, in the studio. <laughs> How are you doing, Pete? I'm doing wonderful, Jason. It's good to see you after all these all these years. And uh -huh. uh, I know we just worked not too long ago together at Harris, you doing the sound, but uh, it's just really great. What a studio you got. It's immense. It's beautiful. Thank you so much, incredible, man. Incredible, man. And just incredible. Yeah, I've been, you know, I've been working on it for a while. Yeah. It's starting to really oh, come nice. together, I man. I see that. I, so. It's... It it uh, it rivals any major studio, that's for sure. I try, man. You got to be competitive in this. You sound. do, it, you do, you it's do. It's cutthroat, but uh, it's, no, it's it's a beautiful project that I've been working on. It's my passion, and I it and really I really is. appreciate that, no, man. It's the truth. Thank you it's so much. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful, yeah, <laughs> dude. It's so great to see you. I you just, too. It's it's just been forever. You know, we worked together whenever I first uh, moved to town. You were my I first remember, paying gig as an I engineer, remember. man. And man, you just kicked it. You did such a great job at Sound. We were working at the old bar. I think it was it was Bill's by the time. Or Barbary just had changed hands from the boy group to Her uh, Caesars Entertainment, and you were right there with that turn and that was the old days on the corner with the bills and and barbary coast and so forth and a lot of the, our fans will remember that obviously and yeah. some of the people won't but those were the days man oh dude that was wild times yeah. for me man very scary you know i just moved to vegas <laughs> yeah, I, I was remember. cleaning toilets over at digital insight recording <sighs> studios where you cut all your records i remember that and i, I was remember. doing it for free as an intern you know, I just remember. to sit in the studios, and I got the opportunity to mix it you, and it changed my whole life. It did. Well, you had the talent. It was so incredible. I mean, I remember when Lucille hired you, she goes, you know, he's young, but he's really a good sound guy. Listen to him. And I said, the first time I listened, she comes back, and she goes, what do you think? I said, give him the job. He's fabulous. And <laughs> that was the rest was history. Thank you so much. Yeah, I had a lot of fun those days, man. Yeah, and I mean, oh, we did. We did. Know, the barbecues. I, we had <laughs> We had some parties back in we, the day, we too, came, didn't we? we came out a couple times and had a lot of fun oh man <laughs> yeah that was uh those were just fantastic times man they wouldn't were, trade them for the world they were yeah a lot of memories and, and fucking hanging out with chuck rollins <laughs> oh yeah doing chuck, the conway oh, twitty thing yeah oh no you mix for him he loved you too he said ah, he's so talented i was like yeah, you have to you know all the people respected you man because you just had talent you're just this young guy with Tons of talent, and that's what it takes, you know? Yeah, that's well, I loved it. I love what I do, man. Yeah. It's such a privilege to do what I do, and to do it on the Strip in fabulous Las Vegas. Oh, you've come so far, too. I mean, everybody knows you, and you've moved up so much, so. Yeah, it was, it's a blast. It's incredible. It, it really is. It's been a beautiful ride so far, and I hope to continue uh, climbing that oh, ladder I'm and sure. doing all kinds of fun stuff, man. I'm sure you'll be doing a lot of good things, like we were talking about earlier. You're just, that's, you're just starting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, that is definitely the idea, man. Yep, yep. So, but you know, I'm here to I'm here to talk about you, my friend. Uh, and so, what what you been up to, man? How's life treating you? Life has been really good. I've been, uh, you know, my my personal side has been great. You know, the last year, and uh, my professional side has actually done a lot of stuff. I guess in the last ten years, you know, we've done a documentary that's on Amazon. Big Elvis is on Amazon. Uh, dot you can go to Amazon and watch it. Oh, really? Uh, it's the big Pete Valley Big Elvis story. Uh, it's it's on there right now. We've had a documentary with Sam Elliott uh, did a documentary on me, it's like a 15 minute short where he narrates it. Uh, Sam Elliott. Sam Elliott. Yeah. I Paul love Stone. Sam Elliott. Yeah, Paul Stone is a producer, friends with uh, Robert De Niro. It was in the Sundance Studio about three years ago. And what else have we done? We did a movie back in 2015. Big Elvis, the LeConner PD Files. It's a comedy, kind of like a Elvis uh, slash comedy film. It has Elvis music, like the, you know, like the, the the movies he put out. You know, so it was. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so we've done a lot of you know a lot of different things besides playing at Harrah's and done some CDs. We did a live concert album here about four or five years ago, and oh, that's cool. I guess we're just I'm just rattling off kind of what's happened since. So where'd you, know. you do the live concert at? Well, I've done actually a couple live concerts. I did one in uh, Chicago. We worked at uh, Harrah's and uh, there in Juliet, we did a, a live concert where they filmed uh, 
uh, a double CD set that we put out, like, kind of like Elvis's live in concert stuff. And then we did a show in uh, Florida, in Miami, out on the casinos out there a few years back. And then, uh, yeah, and so we've done a couple live things with the band and, and all kinds of stuff, which is kind of nice, you know, because when you play the tracks, I mean, they're they're fine, but it, there's just a, a much more of a kick when you're playing with the live group. It just oh, a big, yeah, a big yeah. band, you know, a big orchestra and stuff. And I know you get some really quality tracks, though, man, to play. I have always had the, well, you know, I've always liked to get the best that's out there and cutting edge and, you know, even musicians that's added on or whatever. Um, and we do the best we can. And, you know, so another thing happened about four years ago too, is I, I got to, uh, my stars on the Las Vegas walk of stars in 2017, number 83. Oh, really? Yeah, Where so is that at? It's right outside the, the piano bar at Harris. So if you go right outside to where you're, where the patio is, you know, they get that patio right there is the star. You can see it oh, anytime really? you know, on the Walk of Stars. You can even Google it. It'll come right up. And you'll see I'm the, Googling it right now. I'm going right. to put it on the screen. Yeah, Las Vegas Walk of Stars. And that happened in, uh, I think it was in February 2000, 2017, I think. So, oh, it would probably be Pete Valley, Pete Valley star, though. Huh? Yeah, it's, well, it's Big Elvis or Pete Valley. It doesn't matter. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Awesome. So it's really an honor to be up there with Elvis and Wayne Newton and Liberace and all those different guys. I was kind of blown away by that. Boom. That one right there, huh? That's the one. That's me. That's amazing, man. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. You deserve it. Yeah, man. it was oh, it's just it's it was just unbelievable. It really was. What a day that was. And the governor came in and they all Gave me a proclamation and the different, you know, things from the uh, Congress from the United States and all that stuff. It was just, you know, what more can you have? I mean, it's it's like a dream come true. You know, I just never dreamed as a young boy I'd end up having, you know, the walk of stars like that. You know, so that's amazing, man. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was yeah cool. what an accomplishment in life. Well, it's it's just a great thing. I blessed, you know, God's blessed me and the the fans is what it's all about. And I tell them all the time. I said, man, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't. I wouldn't still be here doing what I'm doing, you know. Oh yeah, you have the best fans, man. Oh, like sure. when I, the people come every year to Las Vegas and they go out of their way to come see your show every single time they come to Vegas, man. Jason, it's fanatical. It's unbelievable. And what's really unbelievable, it, 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 that it, what's happened is, you know, they're older people, but then they tell their kids, and then their kids tell their grandkids, and so. You know, today, for instance, I'm I'm looking at the audience. We're busy today, and the audience ranges. I mean, there's a lot of people older, but there's a lot of people that are 21. I just had a young guy come to me. He goes, "Man, I've been wanting to see you, and I just turned 21. My parents took me here, and so it's incredible to see these young people that come to see this show that are fans of me. And I'm thinking, holy cow, because I'm I'm an older guy, and you know, it's older music, but we have fans of all ages, so it's just, and and it's because of the the parents and the grandparents and whatever, and it's like it just continues on. So yeah, yeah. It's, well, you're such an incredible talent. One of my favorite things uh, about working your show, and I actually just had the the pleasure of doing one more of your shows recently I, I, I for know you. you. That was great. And uh, and it's yeah, and of course it's still happening. People walk by and they kind of see the uh, see the big guy in the Elvis suit, and they're like, oh well, you know that's that's funny or whatever and sure. then you start singing and everyone does this like what <laughs> what just happened you know and they're like no fucking way get over here look at this <laughs> and you just start crushing these songs and your voice is so powerful and you're such an, an incredible incredible thank singer you. thank you so and it much. just blows everyone's mind and they have to come in and they watch the whole show it's it's so it's just a blessing you know man i you know, like you, I'm, I'm so blessed. I got to this town many, many years ago, and I had I was like 30 years old, and I just had like $600 to my name. And I had lived here before, but I came back the second time in 1997, it was. And I, I had just, you know, $500 in my pocket. And a friend of mine at the time says, you know, they're, they're auditioning at this little bar called The Roadhouse, and it was on Boulder Highway. And they said, the owner's going to happen to be there tonight. Would you go? And I thought, yeah, I'll give it a shot. And I was ready to leave. I was going to go back to, to Washington and Seattle. And I went and auditioned, and they said, you're hired. So they hired me, and 
you know, back then I thought, well, that'd be great. You know, I'll be here for maybe a couple months or whatever. I'll go back home and what have you. And that was in like October of 1997. <laughs> and I never went home. So I just ended up, it, it just ended up going from there to another casino, the stations. And then Mr. Gon came over from the South Point and says, hey, would you want a job working at the Barbary Coast? And they brought me to the strip. But it's just incredible how I thought this would just be a, you know, a couple week deal and we're in 2021 and all this has happened and I'm, st- I mean, it's home obviously now, but yeah, it's just, you know, kind of like you when you got here, you know what I mean? And this has become your home and you've been successful. So, it, you know, this is a town that it, it's a great town. It can make you or it can break you. Yeah, you know? I can. But, you know, it's both ways. You can, you can pick either avenues like we've talked about. So it's been great, man. It's just been a, unbelievable ride you know yeah well it can definitely eat you alive you know like we were talking about before right. and i used to drink way too much and you know we were you were joking about that but like the the gambling and the drinking and like sure nothing ever closes so i know a lot of people end up in this town and they just get just destroyed by it they you do know? The, they the, do. the accessibility so of everything yeah it's just overwhelms them it, it does it does and it's tragic it's really sad to watch people destroy their lives on whatever it may be you know gambling or alcohol or drugs or whatever you know it just it, the list goes on but yeah it's it's a town of excess but you know if you know like if you use it correctly it can really do wonders for your life, you know, if it's oh, yeah. like anything, you know, and it's, it, the town is so great for entertainment and, and so much, uh, like you and I are in that field and, you know, it, it's, it, it's just, it's limitless. It's what you can do. You know, it just goes on and on. I, I always think, wow, if this door shuts, what am I going to do? But then when I'm, what I'm thinking that Jason, There's the next no thing you know, doors. another door f- starts flinging open. And I'm like, oh yeah, it just, it's so awesome oh, to watch, yeah. you know, God's so good. You know? No, there's, yeah. And then, and of course, you know, it's, it's just a beautiful life we get to live and there's all kinds of opportunity that comes in all forms, man. That's right. And, That's right. uh, but yeah, especially in Las Vegas, it's, sure. it's just a town of opportunity and there is, there's so many venues that need people they there. Do. Like do. there's, there's more entertainment than we can really handle. No, it's true. And it really is. I mean, when people say, well, the entertainment capital of the world, and they just take it like kind of, you know, lightly and say, well, there's other places. No, there's nothing, nothing comparable to Las Vegas, Nevada. Yeah. And it is the entertainment capital of the world. So it's, it's my home. It's your home. Um, it's, 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 it's just like you say, it's limitless what you can do. You oh know, yeah. There's so much here really. It's like how many lounges and oh. stages and theaters exactly. and just, you know, and now we have stadiums. Yeah. We have two, <laughs> two I huge know. stadiums, it's man. incredible, isn't it? Yeah. And the I, MSG sphere coming yes, up. Yes. It's just crazy. It's just, I'm, I never mm. thought I'd see the day and live to see all this, but I am still here watching. I'm like... Like you say, it's just unbelievable, and it's so wonderful to see, you know. Yeah. You know, Garth Brooks has played the Elysian Stadium. I'm like, that, I mean, I just it blows your mind just how limitless what's happening and what's going on, you know. Oh, dude, it's just it's incredible, man. I I get I am constantly getting called for shows and this oh, and that, you know, sure. and it's like I just wish I had a clone of myself. Yeah. Yeah. I could just be, I could be making <laughs> out like a bandit, you know? And there's a lot of people in this town that actually do take advantage of that kind of thing. And yeah. all they do is take the calls and they, they take a cut and distribute people. Yeah. There because are some there's that, so much of it. So much of it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But there's not, here's the problem. You're only going to be so many Jason Frobergs. And I know that you're well, a mark, you're a mark you. of excellence. And you know, when you do something, it, it, it's, it's really Somebody to replicate that's very difficult, right? It's just it's very difficult. Yeah, you know, I mean, I uh, you have your own you I'm have your own to be cool about. Well, it. Well, you have your own signature. You know that for a sound guy. Yeah, so, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching this, and I know that a lot of you will be, this guy's got his own signature for sound. I I. I you can't get a better sound guy, engineer, or well, they call it, they don't call it engineers anymore, but <laughs> this is old, I'm an old guy, so we, you're not going to get a better sound tech than this guy over here, and, uh, you know, I, I, so I'm, I'm giving him a big plug. Thank you, man. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, we, we yeah just, it's the, the technical skill is, is, you know, okay, we all get to that level, but it's all about being nice to people, man. 
so know, much stress comes in, you know, in this entertainment industry and it, people get on edge and egos get involved and yeah, it's like if you can just yeah. be chill and have a good time and make people smile while you're working well that's really where it's at you know um, what see jason that's that's the key and that's been the the uh the the forefront of my career I, when people come to see the show i try to make them feel like family like they're loved and they are you know, I love them. I pray with them. I cry with them. You know, I, I've, I hear stories all the time about losing loved ones, um, family members in the service, whatever. The, it, it goes on and on in happy times, too, marriages, whatever, and people that pass away. And you know what? I feel it's like an extended family. So, you know, I always pray with them or feel bad with them or whatever, But and I feel happy with them. And it's like you say, if you make people feel loved and comfortable— and you show that, it comes back on you. And what you just said about the way that you feel about, you know, what's important about being, uh, making people feel comfortable and happy and loved, you know, at the end of the day, money is, is nice because we have to live off of that. We understand. But at some point, that's not what becomes important. What becomes important is helping others and loving others like we love ourselves. And you just hit the nail on the head. This is what makes you 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 know and that's what more can you say we need more people like that in this town so Absolutely. thank god for that it's a wonderful thing and i try to spread that love all over man no you do and what is it my buddy ray uh one of my favorite things he likes to say is uh people might might not remember everything you did but they'll always remember how you made them feel uh, that's so true that's so true it's so very true yeah yeah so you know it's uh it's a very interesting thing. So, you know what? Uh, you know, we're working on all kinds of stuff. And, and, you know, in the midst of all that, I've been through all kinds of different stuff in the last 10 years, which starting off with, I, you know, 10 years ago, I met a guy that worked with Elvis for 22 years, became a really, really, really close friend of mine. And uh, for the Elvis fans, they, they'll probably know him. His name was Sonny West. Yeah, I was going to say Sonny, right? Yeah, I remember Sonny him coming was, to the shows a lot. Yeah, Sonny became a really, really close, really, really close friend of mine. He worked with Elvis for 22 years. And, you know, we got to be like best of friends and, and shared so much insight and gave me so much advice. Um, I miss him. He's been gone for about four years now. Or five oh, years. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, he passed. And uh, it Sunny, was man. losing a really good friend because it, first it was the Elvis connection, and then it got even deeper as we became, you know, like really close friends. You know, like you and I, right? We just became really close friends. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, when he passed, it was really sad. But... You know, I learned a lot from that guy, and I learned a lot about Elvis, but I learned a lot about, you know, people and, and how they are, even in the entertainment field. And um, so, you know, things have been really, really wonderful. Uh, I met a really nice young lady about eight months ago. I was working at the MGM, and I invited this girl. And this is the reason I bring up Sonny West and this, this lady is <laughs> Sonny was the best man at my wedding back in 2010. Oh, wow. He was. And so he had never been a best man in his entire life. And he goes, Pete, I'm going to do this for you. He said the last wedding that I was, um, he goes, that, that anyone was my best man was El Elvis was my best man at my wedding. <laughs> so it was a real trip because I, he ended up being my best man. He had never been anybody else's best man. And I said, Sonny, man, I don't even know what to tell you. He goes, I love you and I want to do this for you. So it really meant a lot. You know, it made the news. It was all over the He was all over the place with that. But unfortunately, the, that, that marriage didn't work out. It lasted for several years. But to make a long story short, the lady that I met about eight months ago, I was at the MGM doing a show, and I had never fallen in love with somebody. I mean, I you know, you meet people, you 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 care about them, you feel you know that there's some sort of love. But there's I always heard about this old saying about oh, you know, when you meet your soulmate or you meet somebody you fall in love with, you'll just know. Well, I never had that. I mean, I met women. I thought, okay, they're nice, and and okay, I guess this is what love should be, but I never felt that until I met this girl. So she flew in from L.A. I had her fly in, and I said, would you come and be my guest at the MGM? I'm doing a, a private event. And she said, sure. 
So she came in, and it's funny because we had talked several nights over the phone, and it's like, wow, man, I really connect with this girl. I feel like just something there I, I've never felt before. And she felt the same way, So, but we never met each other. So she flew in. It was really funny because, like I told you earlier, when she first walked through the door, they brought her in, and I was on stage, and they were setting up and stuff. And she looked at me, and I looked at her, and, you know, it was the minute I saw her, Jason, it was like, I just knew I was like, I, that's the love of my life right, right there. And she felt the same way at the same time. It was just the same thing. I mean, she was, almost, she was in tears, literally she started crying and she was like, there's the guy I've always wanted my entire life. And that's we both so beautiful. Yeah. Man. So it was just incredible. So that's really something that's really spectacular that's happened in my life. I mean, entertainment, great stuff, but this is like, you know, my personal life, I, it can't get any better, you know? I'm so happy for you, man. Yeah. Thank you. And yeah. finding that finding that significant none of that partner that you get to yeah. go through this journey with is so important. It is. It really is. And you yeah. can share your everything, you know, and that's you, you don't get to do that very much, you know. Yeah. It's yeah. it's it's rare, man. Some it people really don't is. ever find it. No, some people don't, and I've heard about it and I've went through most of my life not finding that. So yeah. it was incredible to to find that. I'm very thankful for that, you know. That's so fantastic, man. Congratulations. Thank on you that, so much. I'm, I'm Thank fucking you. I'm stoked for you, man. Thank you. Yeah. I was blessed to find, uh, I was so blessed to find Angela, man. You yeah. Know, she she's such a nice, yes, I saw her. She's, I mean, tonight and she's, what a wonderful, wonderful lady you have. And she's so, you know, gracious and so, uh, so much of a hostess. I mean, wonderful. I mean, you can tell she's just a wonderful lady. God bless you both. And I can tell you're, that's the right lady there. Oh, yeah. She's myself. a fantastic woman. She's the magic behind the curtain on this wow. thing, too. You know, she keeps this all running for me and That's keeps fabulous. it all together and makes sure that, it, you know, it, ta it takes more than just me to make this oh, show Oh, no. I agree. I agree. That's the, you know yeah. what they say, behind every good guy is a great woman, you know. That's Step very back. true. And especially in this case, man. That's you know, awesome. I couldn't do it without oh, her. I'm so happy to hear that as well. No. And uh, and yeah, speaking of great things, man, like uh, you've been losing even more weight. I have. When you were working with me, I think I was. Uh, I'm still in the fives. I think I was like five twenty or five ten or something. You were up there, man. I was, and then uh, you know, I gained weight after you left. I lost some, and then I gained some again. I went all, uh, up to six hundred pounds, and then I got in a car accident back in 2015. And when that happened. I, you know, I realized because I was in the hospital for like a, a day and a half and, you know, the doctors were like, hey, you know, you're, they couldn't find a lot wrong with me, but the the doctors told me, they, there was three of them, they stood on my bed and they go, look, man, you know, you're, you're playing Russian roulette. You really, really are. This is going to get you at some point. You're doing okay right now. And, but in another, you know, you're 50, I was 50 at the time. And they said, you know, another five or 10 years, it's, it's not going to be like this for you. You're, yeah. You know, if you don't lose this weight, you're not going to be here. And I, you know, I woke up one morning that within six months after that, and I said, you know what? I'm just going to start eating more proper. I'm not going to be eating bad as often, and I'm going to exercise more. And I started doing that. And within, I really have lost a lot of weight this year, but within the last five years, I've lost over 200 pounds. Jeez, man. Yes. That's more than I weigh in entirety. Yeah. Man. That's a whole person exactly. you put away. <laughs> exactly. So I'm like 380 now. And, you know, I, the, the doctor told me, he goes, look, man, if we can get you down to 250, he goes, he goes, you're 6'3", your bones are humongous, so you'll be fine. But he said, you know, lose another 100 plus pounds. He goes, and he goes, I know you can do it because you've lost this much. I'm like, and my whole eating patterns changed. I'm more, I, I don't, I used to eat a lot of red meat. I don't do that anymore. I, I got off of all that. I don't eat fried really? food. I don't eat sugar because it's just cancer causing and heart attack. Yeah. And I just stayed off all that more, a lot more vegetables and fruit and fish and chicken. That's pretty much what I exist off of and green tea. And so I'm kind of. <laughs> you know, trying to just eat really, really yeah. healthy, and it's paid off. You know, it really has. I'm so happy to hear that, man. Thank you, thank you. And I, you know, and plus at my house, I keep it really. I meditate a lot. You know, I pray a lot. I read my Bible stuff, but I, I put on really relaxing music. And you know, I notice what I really do notice is if it's peaceful around you, you really, it, your mind really, it, it's good for you because you really think and you get to meditate. 
And when you do all those things, it really helps you a lot. It really, really does. And I know that might sound a little out there, but it's the truth. No, and especially not for this show. I talk about it all the time. Okay. I do. Um, I actually just finished my first yoga video today. I got oh, it uploaded. I'm gonna. Awesome. So I gotta type some stuff up and tag it and everything. It'll be sure. out there. And we got meditation videos. Yeah, and, that's fabulous. Yeah, no, it's, I'm it, super into that thing. No, well, it really, it, it, you know what? It really, it, when it's peaceful, and, and and I side with you. When you get to sit there and you, I, I play this really nice relaxing piano music, and you know, you get to meditate and you're one with God, and you just sit there and you. I, I got to tell you, Jason, it's, I think it's very healthy for your soul and it's very healthy for your physical body as well. Absolutely. You know, it is. It does all good things for you, you know? Yeah. It's good so. to, it's good to take a step back from this physical world for a second yes. and remind yourself that this yes. body isn't who I am. This it, body it is isn't. mine. No. It's yeah. not me. Well, you know what? It's when we die, it, you know, this is going to go back to the ground, but we have a spirit that's going to live forever. Yeah. So yeah, no, you're right about that. It's, this is not, this isn't it. This is just a, a shell for our passing world, right? Yeah, it's a game we're playing. Exactly. Man. It's <laughs> just for fun. You know? yeah. It's an experience. It's an experience, brother. Yeah. It's an experience, that's so, for sure. It's, it's beautiful, man. I love hearing that. And, yeah. and I, I try to help people like, you know, see that in their life you know, that's and great. talk about that and be open about it and sound kind of like a crazy person sometimes. No, and I not go, at all. I go, it's okay, man. Not you know? at all. Because no. I, I say it with love. Well, you know what? And that's that's the key to the world is love. And I and I see that with you. You're full of it. I've always seen that. I mean, even from the first day that I met you, you're you're very you just had full of love and you're a great guy. So, you know, I was just talking to people today about that, a couple, and they said, "Man, you just seem so." You know, they were telling me they said you're just such a nice guy. You're loving. I said, "Look," I said, "This is how I feel." You know, it doesn't hurt to love people. And I says, if everybody, yep. if everybody in this world right now, right now, everybody said, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, said, we're going to do what we can to help others and love everybody. There'd be no war. There'd be no famine. There'd be no, no there'd be none of this. Yeah. It would all stop today. Everything. Yeah. Because everybody be trying to help each other and love each other. And if, every, I mean, I know that's an improbability, but if it could happen, can you imagine what this world would be like? It would be beautiful, man. It, would it just, really would. It would just be incredible. You know? It's like that John Lennon song. Right? Imagine, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But, you know, that's the game, man. You know, yeah. it's like you just can you can lead by example and, and tend your yep. own garden and just go, you know, you uh, through osmosis, you know, we You're spread right. love out no. to the world. And You're spot on. You slowly affect everyone around you, man. I'm, I'm in total agreement with that, 100%. A yeah. total agreement. Yeah, it sounds like we're on the same page. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, it's it's you know, you just put it out there and it's free, you know. It it's, is it's all there is, man. It it's is. love and you just you're full of it and it's it's yep. it's so easy to get trapped in that illusion of this is all there is, yes. and attachment to physical yes. things, yes. And addiction to substances Certainly. and trying to find happiness in the outside world. Yep. When it was all in here in the first no, place, no. This is such a great subject you're talking about because, yeah. you know, people are. It's sad, and you know, I, I'm, I like I told you earlier when I when I was a younger guy, I was guilty of that. I was an addictive. I had a friend tell me he was a sax player. He goes, "You're an addictive. You have an addictive personality." And I was like, "What the heck does that mean?" Well, I found out within two or three years what he was talking about. You know, with the food and the drinking and the whatever. And I just thought to myself, you know. He's right, and I do, and and I realized, you know, for me, and this is not for everybody else, because everybody has different religions and faith, so, and faith and what they believe in, but for me, I realized that my life was empty because I was looking for things of this world, and then I realized, you know, yeah. through and I and I, I'm a Christian, so I believe that Christ changed my life because I realized his his teaching is, don't keep your eyes on this world, keep your eyes on what's happening after, and love. You know, what he, is, he said his most important commandment is love one another as you love yourself. Well, you know, if you really love yourself, which most of us do, I mean, some of us are lost or misguided, but mm -hmm. if, you, if you love yourself or you, you have any compassion, you, you're supposed to share that with your brother and sister, you know, which is you or whoever. So, you know, everybody has a different belief and faith or what have you, but 
it changed my life a lot. I know that. Oh yeah, man. Jesus yeah. is great. I love Jesus. Yeah. You so know? It's, it's, it's love, you know, it's about love. You know, know uh, he's, uh, he said some amazing things, man. And he did some amazing things and yeah. it's just a great example to yeah, lead your is. life by man. Sure. Sure. You know, it does. That, sure. that whole ideology. Certainly. Certainly. It's just such a beautiful thing, man. You know, as long as you just love others, you know, so that's a, it's a great thing. And I'm, you know, I'm glad to share that with everybody because, you know, that's, you know, being an entertainer and stuff, a lot of people think, well, you know, some of them are into them, you know, their own bag and their, you know, material things or what they do or what have you. And that's not just entertainers. I, I'll, I'll retract that. I'll say every field. But yeah, you know what? It, it's great when you people get the picture about, you know, helping and loving one another. And you know what? It, it, like I say, it just makes the world a better place. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's all we're here to do, man. You know, yeah. once you see it, you can't unsee it. And yeah. then you just go, oh, okay, I get it. It's not about me. It's not yeah. about yeah. money or any of the status no. or ego. It's just about love. You got it. That's the truth. Uh, you know, and, so true. It's yeah, so true. Man. Yeah, and that's uh, it's one of the things I love doing this for, man. I just get to be with my friends, spread love, spread yes. awareness of love. And, well, that's, and that's really my only goal in life anymore. Man. Well, you know what? And that's a great goal to have, my friend. That's a great goal to have. I... I've changed a lot over the years. I remember when I was a younger guy, I was like, man, you know, I remember I had, you know, I still have a, a Lincoln, but I had Cadillacs and I thought, well, you know, if I could get a big house that looks like Graceland and <laughs> if I could have all this stuff, I'd be just, and when you're young, you just, yeah. you dream that, right? And then as I got older, I started realizing, well, I don't need a house like Graceland. I don't need six cars or five cars. And I... You know, I lived in a nice house before, and I had a lot of cars, and I had different things. And when I had it, I wasn't happy. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't mean anything. Nothing in this physical world can make you <laughs> That's happy. That's what I'm saying. It didn't. Yeah, and even if it brings some kind of sense of joy to you, it's fleeting. Amen. No, that's the truth. And that's what happened. So what ended up happening was I got rid of all that. I've, I've still got three vehicles, but I, I got a pickup truck and I got the truck you parked and I got an old, yeah. uh, you know, nice Lincoln that I've, I've kept forever. I love but I ended, up, I ended up moving out to, to Prump, which is a little country town, you know, about 45,000 people. And I live on an acre and a half in a mobile home. That's fantastic. And I'm man. happy there. Yeah. I got my little pool in the back. I mean, I just live simple. It's like a very country life. And you know what, Jason? I'm the happiest I've ever been. It's peaceful, quiet, you know, it's serene. I, I love I love it. You know? Yeah. The second you stop trying to add to yourself and you realize that you were born perfect already, and there's nothing there's nothing to do, there's nothing to attain. You know, it's just like just be and and love yeah, life and, and love, love everyone around you. Exactly, and, exactly. And you'll just be the happiest guy. You'll live in you, bliss. You will. The you morning. will. Yeah. Yeah. I. I. You know what? It took me a lot. See, you're a young fella, and you learned that. And it took me a lot longer to figure that one out. Okay, it took me a, a while to finally just come to that realization that hey, it's not about what you have. It's not about you know, the popularity or, you know, hit records or, or whatever. I mean, in the field that we're in, Yeah. you know, it, are they nice? Of course. Uh, are they, is it really essential? No, not at all. Not no. at all. It's about just being happy, making others happy. That's it, man. Yeah. It's a, it's beautiful, man. I yeah, love that. It is. It's so beautiful. It is. Well, it's great to share. It's great to share. Yeah, that's I I can talk about it all freaking day, man. Yeah. I'll get I'll start going on crazy fucking rants if I keep going. About it, <laughs> but no, it's it changed my life. I was really a depressed guy, and I started digging into all this stuff and really just letting go of sure. it all and saying, you know, well, whatever. If it can help, I'll try it. You yeah. Know? And I was really like skeptical about the whole concept of it because it was really materialistic sure cynical and pessimistic sure and i started down the path and i let go of a little few things at a time yeah. started the meditation process started eating better right. got sober sure and uh and like yeah just my life just consistently kept getting better every step i took in that direction yeah. uh and i was like oh I mean, I'm I'm happier. The people around me are happier. My sure. life is simpler, and I feel more complete. I'm not reaching for things, yeah. and yeah. Uh, and yeah, uh, and I think everybody finds that eventually, man. You know? Yeah, well, I sure hope they do because, like you say, that's it's once you let go of things, you just start realizing, 
you know, enjoy today. We're not promised tomorrow. Just enjoy today. Enjoy whatever's given you and try to make the best out of everything that's happening. And, you know, there's always something to be thankful for because there's always others that are so much more misfortunate than we are. Yeah. You know, whether it's health, whether it's poverty, whether it's whatever the case may be. And, and you know, when I get up in the morning now, being my age, I'm like, and I th- I do, I literally, I, I say the Lord's Prayer. I go, th- good morning, Jesus. I'm like, thank you for another day. I'm right. still alive. One I'm still more. here. I got another day, one more day, like Diamond Rio. You know, I got another yeah. day. So I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that I get to go on. Today, every time I get to perform, I'm like, yes, I'm out here. I'm singing. I'm making people happy. And that makes me happy. So it's a great thing. You yeah, know? you got a fantastic gig, man. I have to say, you know, you... Uh... You make a lot of people happy, and you get to just go sing every, you know. And, oh and, no, it's and it's just such a beautiful, beautiful way yeah. to exist, man. No, I your living. You know, really, it is. And I've had people tell me they go, "Do you feel like you're working?" And I, just, I'm like, no, not hardly. I, I never get tired of it. I, I, you know, when the phone rings and somebody says, "Hey, we got it. We'd like to book you, or we'd like to do a, a private event, or." Whatever it is, and it's always got to do with music and stuff. I am just so delighted and happy to do that. I'm like, oh, what a blessing, you know. I mean, and, and everybody's thankful. They're like, oh, thank you for doing this. I'm like, no, thank you for letting me do this because, it, you know, I told this to the fans today. We were talking. They're like, thank you for being here. I'm like, no, thank you because it. it you guys don't know what you, you guys are doing, making me happy. Because when I'm singing and seeing you happy, it's making me happy. So it's like it, it's it, it's all reflecting to each other. So thank you. You know, I tell that to the people all the time, and I'm sure you do. Oh yeah. You know, it's such a it's blessing a, that we get to do. I mean, you have an art uh, that you do, Jason, and I have an art that I do, and we both get to do this and make a living, and uh, we're blessed. Yeah. A hundred percent we are, man. Yeah. You know, it's it's just fantastic to get to do this for a living. Oh, yeah. And yeah. make people happy. You it know, is. I was just talking about this on the last podcast. You know, people spend all week long doing their nine to five, you know, grinding and sure. out. And they're like, but Friday's coming. Friday night's coming. And it's like, what are they going to do on Friday night? It's like, well, we provide that, you know, we provide yes. that light at the end of the tunnel for people to make it through the work week no, and i think it's just such an important thing it really is it, it really seems is. silly almost to be like oh we just put on shows and make flashy lights and make shit loud and yeah you know but it's like ah it gives people like a reason to continue it on it does it does it really does i mean it, with entertainment i mean when you know like the people that come to the show they're like we plan all year to come to see you and we plan all year to come to vegas and you're like the top of the list to see the show and then we go do this and this and that but like you just said, these people are work. I mean, what are they doing during that year? Yeah. Well, they're working their tail off. They're working really hard, and then they get to come to Las Vegas or whatever. They get to see their performance that they want to see, and that that I mean, that's their that's a that's big monumental stuff for somebody. Yeah, that's a stress relief. They go, wow, we went to Vegas. We got to see Big Elvis or you know whoever you know with him or whatever the case may be. And then we we got to do this and do that. And then we got to go home. And they're thinking to themselves, wow, what a great vacation that was. That was wonderful. So you're right. It, yeah, it makes it all worthwhile. Yeah, they man. look forward to that. Yeah. You know? and it's so deep, you know, because you got the people that are behind the scenes, like the, you know, the the, the sound technicians and the, you know, the the lighting people and the dancers and the musicians. I mean, it just goes on and on. And that's and that, all those people are are making a difference because, like you say, they're providing this mecca for people to come and enjoy. So oh, yeah. it's fabulous. It's really like the is. credits at the end of the movie, you know, there's like 10,000 people that, that CGI'd the movie together. Yes. And all oh, the, all yes. The and the production crew. And, and you know what? It, they don't really, I mean, you can look at an actor and actress, but that's, that's just a very tip of the iceberg. There, there's this, big amount of people underneath that made this happen from the grips to the the the, the you know the the costume people to the mm-hmm. makeup people to the CGI to it just goes on and the sound techs and the audio techs and the and the visual I mean it, 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 directors I mean it just goes on and on you know oh, yeah. that same with the shows they're all the same it's just it, it's you see an entertainer or you, let's say you see Celine Dion but you don't realize that behind this show is is a cast of 
you know, 150 people that's making this happen. Yeah. So it's it's incredible. It really is something to, to behold, you know. And, and all those people are intricate for the making that show happen. So yeah, it's 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 it, it's a blessing for everybody that gets to do that. Yeah, it is, man. It really, and really it's is. nice to have a town where we can all come and have a plethora of work like Las Vegas. Yes. Like it's it's really hard. Like you know, Angela and I talk about maybe moving somewhere where there's like trees and water and like getting out of the desert. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, but oh, what am I gonna do for a living? You know, no. and it's like I really no. love my job. Yeah. And uh, it's it's gonna be hard to go out. And I'll find like maybe one theater that I can work at. Sure. When their shows or like sure. you know it's. Well, it's, it's just difficult. not the same when you leave Vegas. Vegas no. is such a rare thing. Well, it is. It's a rare jewel. And I mean, you know what? I, I, you know, I come from Washington State, so I'm used to, you know, Seattle when I was a young boy was before everything changed, unfortunately. But when I was a young guy in the 70s, man, it was a bunch of hippies. And I mean, literally, <laughs> I was just a boy growing up. And Seattle was a clean town. I mean, we used to go to Green Lake and the weather was wonderful and all that. And, you know, I remember when I was like 14 or 15 and my uncle was talking to my mom, like, you know, if this kid wants to sing, he can't stay here. There's nothing here. There's just bars and that's, yeah. the, there's nothing here, man. You got to take him to Vegas. My uncle was even smart enough to know that. And, uh, you know, I, I came the first time and I didn't do as great as I did the second time, obviously, but. You know, like you just said, I mean, Vegas, it's 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 the place. It's just the place for entertainment. I mean, for and not just entertainers, but the place for sound people, the place for, you know, audio, visual. It just goes on and on, you know. So it is it is the town that's just got, and like we talked about, it's got a lot of work. Yeah. You know, and thank goodness it's coming back again. Thank so, yeah, goodness. It's yeah. a good thing to I, see. Yeah, especially, like, yeah, when they shut all oh. the entertainment down. God, did the Vegas suffer, man. Like, it, so well, many people suffer. It, the whole thing shut down, so everybody yeah. was out of work. I was, I didn't work. I was doing live <laughs> feeds on my YouTube channel for, which really helped a lot of people. But we uh, we did about four or five shows, and uh, they called us up in June of 2020, and they put it in the newspaper. It was in the RJ, the headlines. We were the first, in, I was the first entertainer to open the strip up. Oh, really? Yeah, in June 2020, it was in the RJ, and they said Big Al was the first guy to open entertainment, you know, the first headliner to open entertainment, and they brought me back, and they, they, they told me, they said, you know, you're, you're a headliner, but you're a small, you know, we don't, you don't command all this musicians and stuff, and we can't have that because of the COVID thing. Would you please come back? And I said, sure, because we ha they had to do something. So they, they had to get an okay from Sisolak. So <laughs> Caesars Entertainment went to uh, Sisolak and said, we want to bring Big Elvis back. And he goes, well, is he going you know, to have a ban and stuff? They're like, no, he's just going to do his regular act. He said, well, he has to wear a mask. And and they, <laughs> guys, I remember my buddies. That's why you sing? Yeah. And so they looked at him. The, the, all the head guys from Caesar Entertainment goes, you can't do that. You can't, yeah. you can't make Big Elvis sing with a mask. And he goes, and, the, and one guy is really funny because he goes, have you ever heard Big Elvis sing? And Sislak goes, no, I've heard of him. He goes, I know he's, he, I've, we've heard that, you know, we know who he is and we know he's, you know, he's good and people come. They go, he goes, no, this guy's like Andre, Andrea Bocelli. He just yeah. blows his, you know, he's really powerful and you can't sing with a man. So Steve says like us, okay. He goes, he goes, okay. He says, he could, he could take the mask off and he could sing, but he has to put it on when he's done. They said, fine. So it was really funny and they had to work that out. But I was really honored, you know, that when they called me and said, listen, you're the first guy to open Las Vegas and I've got the headlines of the paper and it just, you know, that really was an honor, you know, to be the first guy back. But, it, what was really weird was it was sad to see how devastating it was um, those months that everything was shut down and so many bands left, so many, entertain a lot of people left town and we lost a lot of acts and a lot of shows didn't make it afterwards. And it, oh, yeah. And it's still been impactful. Even my show has been impacted. But, you know, it's going to come back and, and uh, we had this, this variant come back with the COVID, the Delta thing and you know what, I'm glad when this is gone because, you know, what it was before and what it is now is a little bit different. But it is coming back, and I thank God to see people working again because 
that was devastating, especially for the entertainment and the uh, hospitality industry and the restaurants and all that, bars and what have you. Yeah, we got we got crushed by it, man. It was pretty brutal, and like we so did. many people left town. Now that it's coming back <laughs> online, like more full swing, it, people are really scrambling to get uh, get techs out there and yes, and fill shows and fill sure. shifts, man. And uh, I mean, it's beneficial for people like me who stick stuck oh. around, but it's it's. It's well, definitely opened up a uh, a hole in the industry. It, it has for everything, and uh, you know, it's it's like everything. I mean, we haven't seen something like this since nineteen, you know, since the Spanish flu. I mean, really. Yeah. And, and I think this. I hate to say this. I mean, I don't. I won't say it's worse, but I think it's lasting longer. Yeah. Than the Spanish flu did because of the variant thing and all that. But yeah, it really impacted a lot. They, you know. A lot of people lost their jobs and they lost their businesses and they lost their lives. I mean, it's just a, a sad thing to see happen. And, you know, I, I pray every day for that, you know, for this to come to a, a, an end soon so everybody can start living again normally, you know. Yeah, it's it's probably going to be till 2023. I yeah, imagine. no, I think you're right. I think you're looking at another year. You're spot on. Yeah, you're 2022 on. is like it's gonna right be, around the corner. Yeah, it's going to be a rough ride for another year. I, yeah. I see that already. But, you know, such is life. I mean, it's, you know, you just got to live through it and do the best you can. I just, it's one of those, it's just one of those things that happen, you know. Yeah, yeah. And like, uh, I love this guy, uh, Sadhguru, on, on, U- on YouTube and such, man. And mm-hmm. he, he always says, you know, this is, this is a very soft ball being thrown at us, uh, civilization wise. You yes. know, like, it could be so much worse. Oh, he's right. No, it could have uh, uh, been something much worse. He's, yeah. You're right. Oh, no. It could have, this, this, <laughs> I mean, this is, it, they call it inconvenient, but it could have been something, you know, just think about it. If it could have been something like an Ebola type thing and that got out as bad as this did, it would have wiped out, I mean. Oh, yeah. Gracious. I don't, I don't know how many people we know. Yeah. I think a lot of the, the main problems is like, uh, you know, psychological drama more than anything. Yeah. People are frustrated and upset about the, you know, the, the freedoms they're losing and the, right. the world collapsing around them. But right. It's like you're still alive, you know, things are still, we're moving forward. Sure. You fucking kill everybody. No, no, so. and you know what? There's always going to be more toilet paper and uh, yeah, right? know, hand sanitizer and the stuff. The friggin' toilet paper thing. <laughs> I, I really had a real good uh, kick out of that when everybody was fighting over toilet paper. Right? Yeah. I, I tried to figure that out for a while, but it didn't, it eluded me. I don't know, Jason. I Angela got me a bidet for my birthday. My birthday's in April, right. so like March hit and everyone's sure. getting rid of the toilet paper and she goes fuck toilet paper we got a bidet now that's even like, better no. i love that thing you know no, i've we got one to too no nope. i've been using one for years actually so when it happened i just had a little smile on my face and people are going aren't you bothered by this i said none at all nope. <laughs> so nope. you got it <laughs> Yeah, I uh, nah, I didn't mess around in the beginning either. Whenever they were like, people are, you know, the second I caught wind that anything was like really up, I went out and just fucking stockpiled canned food and bottled right. water no, everybody and toilet did. paper and yeah. before it all like disappeared. Sure, man. sure. Yeah. No, it was something else, man. It was wild. It was it a was, wild People time. were fighting over stuff. It was, I remember. Hand sanitizer was 30 bucks a bottle. Eh? Oh, yeah, I know, that was, right? That was a kick. If you could even find it. If you could find it. Yeah, exactly. it's fucking crazy. No, how do you think about that? It was something else, man. Yeah, we'll be looking back on that. Well, it'll be in the, oh, I was just telling oh, people yeah. today, I said, that's going to definitely be talking about for hundreds of years. It'll be in the history books, that's yeah, for sure. The toilet paper the, thing. Oh, no, they'll talk about it. They'll have a good time with that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's oh, funny, man. No, no, no. Yeah, fucking yeah. a man. I, I dig it, dude. So hey, I got a, uh, I got a video pulled up of you singing awesome. some stuff. It actually awesome. downloaded. It took a second. I was transferring it from my phone onto the laptop all right. and all that. All right. Let's see how it fucking came out. It's a, uh, a little backstory. You always like to bring up. Uh, a little Elvis. A little Elvis. Oh yeah. And the Elvets, and right? The Elvets. Yeah. You got it, man. You got it. And uh, bring your, you know, you bring your fans up, and they have some fun. Sure. You smack a wig on people and everything. Yeah, it's yeah. Hilarious. It's just you know, let everyone come up and make a fool of themselves. Oh, that, that, that was funny. Yeah. Was yeah. Awesome. Get a catch of some of the show you got going on over Harris. <laughs> Yeah. 
This girl right here, too, oh, over his uh, left shoulder. She was one of those ones that walked by with her her friend and was just fascinated with you. She's like, no uh, way this is happening right now. Awesome. Well, they're having a good time here. <laughs> Friggin' goober, man. Oh, yeah, it's a lot of fun what you do over there, man. Yeah, well, you know, like we talked about it, it's such a stress reliever for people. Man. So, yeah, but you're doing that over at Harris uh, Thursdays and Fridays, right? Thursdays and Fridays, 2, 3, and 4 p.m. We've got six shows a week now. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So we signed up. A year. We got another. We're, we're there through 2022. So we got a year and a half left. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it's a nice little contract. Yeah, and hopefully they'll get you back on for like five days a week again. Yeah, we, well, we, never, we, I, we were working three days. I, I probably not going to go back to five. That's... You yeah, know, that was a I'm, lot. Yeah, it was a lot. And I did that up through 2014 and 15 shows a week. And then when I went to, I moved to Pahrump, we went to Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, which was three days a week, which was perfect. Yeah. And I've been doing that for the last five years until COVID hit. And then they put us down to two because the piano bar used to be open seven days a week. Now it's only open four. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they cut it back a little bit, but you know, it'll, it'll come back. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Yep. Yeah, it's uh well, yeah, yeah. So, but it's it's yeah, it's a great gig. I mean, you know, I've I've been on the strip now for what twenty years solid. I mean, it's it's a long, a long haul. That they've said that there's never <laughs> never been a lounge performer that's been working for twenty years like that. That's yeah, that's Center a lot. Strip too, man. Holding it down on Center Strip yeah. is a big deal. Yeah, that was a long. It's a long haul. Yeah, and you always bring in. Uh, like uh, other Elvis impersonators. Oh yeah, no. That when they come on favorite, board, yeah. you bet we get them up. And we've had Tina Turner impersonators. We oh, remember the Tina Turner. Yeah, one. we've had you name it the blues bro. Anybody that comes in that likes to perform. I, you know, when I was a young boy, I remember I wanted to sing with bands and stuff. And once in a while, so we'd say, "No, we can't get you up and stuff." And I used to say, "You know, if I ever if I ever perform, I'm going to get." people love to sing because you know that means a lot to them so when they come there and a lot of these guys come from different parts of the country or world or something they want to get up i'm like heck yeah man come on up here and jam away you know yeah it's, dude it means the world to those guys too it they're just does. so stoked about it they, they get to video themselves singing on their strip as they Elvis do or whatever. they do yeah just and you know what and and i've made so many friends with that and they go home and they post their videos and they're just like, thank you so much. I'm like, of course, man, anytime, come back, you know, come back and see us and do it again. Yeah. I still run into like El Elvis impersonators around town Yeah, that used to come to your show, man. I'm yeah. Like, dude, a lot of those guys, like some, a lot of them will do like catering gigs and stuff sure, like that. Sure. But the hair is their hair, man. They're not wearing a wig or anything. So That's you can awesome. see them from a mile away. They got, <laughs> they got the freaking Elvis too. <laughs> the and the burns. And, the... and they still recognize me. And they're like, oh, bro. Yeah, know? they remember you. Yeah. yeah. So no, cool. most of them are really nice guys. They really are. I've, I mean, some of those, I worked in something called the Elvis Choir about 20 years ago. And I mean, there was like 15 of those guys and we all worked together and we all sang together. And, you know, so I know most of the, uh, there's some newer ones, but I know most of the older ones. And even the newer ones, um, they were kids when I was starting. And I know, they know me, you know, I'm kind of like the granddaddy now to them. But so I, I know most of the Elvis guys in town. I'd say 95% of them anyway. You still see those two big tall dudes that were dressed like Elvis all the time, drinking Michelob Light? Oh, yeah. No, you, pictures. Yeah, yeah. There was the one guy's in a wheelchair. He disappeared. Oh, no. no he, he ended up in a wheelchair, and he disappeared. So I don't know what happened to him. But Tommy Lynn, you're talking about Tommy. Yeah, yeah. Tommy ended up getting cancer. He's in uh, Texas. Oh, yeah, a really good friend of mine, man. Really oh. good friend of mine. He's, you know, it's so sad because he was, he was doing Elvis, but he always liked Wayne Newton. So he had the mustache. Remember, he just yeah. ended up doing Wayne Newton. And then he got sick and uh, he lost a kidney and they, you know, so his, his kid said, look, you got to come home. 
and they moved him to Texas. And it's oh. just, I pray for him every night. He's just such a nice guy. And he's, you know, he's got cancer. So keep him in your prayers, man. You know, he's Absolutely. A, a nice guy, really nice guy. So yeah, I, lots, you know, it's part of life, you know, he's it's how it goes, right? Well, At least he lived it up strong. I mean, he did, man. He did on the strip. Oh yeah. No, he take pictures in an Elvis costume he did, and drink and beer he all made day a long. a ton of money and he drank beer all day long. Yeah. <laughs> he'd come in the back room and he'd open his belt. I was like, Tommy, he's like, yeah, it's like about seven, 800 bucks here, man. I was like, holy kid, that was back yeah. in the day, you know? So, uh, yeah, he was just quite the guy, you know, they made a killing, man. He did every day. So it was just incredible. I mean, this this town, like I say, it's just, I mean, I got a call a, a couple of days ago from Matt Lewis, and he's a guy that works at uh, Legends. He's the an Elvis guy, and now he's an entertainment agency. And he's like, yeah, they want a big Elvis, and, they, and they're doing a walk-around thing, and, uh, you know, can you do this gig, and it's only a couple of hours, and it pays really good money. I'm like, yeah, of course I can. He goes, yeah, they wanted you explicitly, and they wanted, you know, different people and so forth, and he goes, he goes, so would you do it? I was like, you, you bet. So it's really, like we talked about, it's so awesome to, to work in a place that you're always got, like I'm always working an extra gig here or somewhere or doing something. And I mean, that's such a blessing, man. You wouldn't, if you're in a small little town you are you're living somewhere else, you're not going to get that kind of stuff. It just doesn't happen. No. Not like Vegas, you know, you're not going to be working all the time if you want or don't want, you know, whatever you want to do. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's a fantastic place to live. Yeah, man. It's, I it's, love it. it's great for entertainment. I know that, and it keeps you busy. So yeah, yeah. Well, awesome, man. You know what? It's been about an hour, bro. All we've right, been just well, chatting it up. Yeah, we have, and you know what, Jason? It. It's just great to see you. And we're gonna—I can't wait to put this on our pages for our fans to watch, and yeah. they're gonna really enjoy it. And I know your fans, and it's just gonna be a great, great podcast. Yeah, I've been—I've yeah, been looking forward to having you on for a while now, I know, man. You're I a good know. friend, and it's just so great to be able to catch up with you, man. Before you, you, yeah. Before you run off real yeah. quick, why don't oh, you yeah, tell yeah, those, those people about your your ring there? I was gonna say, yeah, I have the the. Elvis ring, I got the TCB, I have he the shades, because you were always hooking me up, man. You were uh, always taking good care of me. Well, yeah. because we wanted to make sure you had, you're Elvis, Elvis-fied, you know, you had all the different Elvis stuff. And, oh, yeah. You know, the, you had the 1977 is... concert ring, that was the last concert that Elvis Ooh. had, yeah. Yeah, He's got I love the this Elvis ring, man. glasses, they don't even sell those anymore, those are the no. old timers, those are the nice ones. These are great with the TCB Yeah, the TCB on the, on the side, side. yep. Yeah, yeah, I still got it, man. The TCB, yeah, you're you're rocking, baby. I couldn't get, I couldn't get rid of this stuff. You got it, but you got to tell everybody thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. There you go. Now you've you've done the right. show. You've yeah. The show. It's just the only thing that's wrong is is we should have saved your outro because we used to have an outro with you. You did oh, a voiceover. God. And I, we we were using that outro until about three years ago, until Josh came. And Josh goes, do you mind if I do? I was like, no, because he does that st- yeah. stuff too. And he, and the guy before goes, no, he goes, yeah, I can't talk as good as this guy. So your voice would come on with the 2001 every time we were done with the set. That's amazing. We, we used it up until like two or three years ago. Oh, I'm honored, yeah, man. Yeah, so that thing was going forever. I mean, it was That's your voice. fantastic. So I just wanted to share that with everybody. Remember the one I did that we had to take down? I was a little bit of a rascal i did the crazy hillbilly voice for the bill yes, character yeah i like, can't do that man that was funny you know what i yeah, even like better hilarious. and i want to share this with everybody i remember one time <laughs> we were talking because i told you my story about me kirk cobain right remember yeah. that story and you told me and i said i used to i mean i was like i was like jason i want to do something different when we walk out sometime i said why don't we i want to sing like smells like teen spirit and you're like we're doing it <laughs> we're, we're gonna do this thing and i'm gonna blast it and you're gonna come uh, up and, and then everybody's like you can't ever, i remember chuck and all the people are like no 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 you'll blast everybody out of here man all of his fans will be like blown through the door and you're like yeah we're gonna do you and i were okay, man. you and i were all for it everybody yeah. was trying to put the brakes on us you remember that i do remember that <laughs> i'm always i'm always freaking game for whatever man you know like let's let's experience oh, i love it that's what i liked about you you always Always went along with you're like okay, Pete. We're gonna do it. Everybody else was like, no, you guys can't do that. <laughs> uh, Anyhow, it's not ever, those are a couple of little short memories for you. <laughs> yeah, man. No, we had such a good time. We man. did. We had such a good time back in the day, and we you were did. always so good. I remember for my birthday, you bought me a friggin' Xbox. 
yeah. for my birthday. Yeah. You were fucking, and we, so we could play Call of Duty. I know, man. That, that was, was the awesome. Bomb. It was the One bomb. of the best people I ever worked no, with. No, man, you were awesome. You were a great guy. And you know what? We're, like I talked to, we're, I won't let the cow out of the bag for the fans, but yeah. this project may go off or we're going to be working together again on a couple of things. So I'm looking forward to it big time. Definitely. Man. I man. can't wait to Definitely. have you, you know, hopefully in the studio. Yeah, that's here what we're hoping for. You know, and, uh, I'm working on that right as we speak. So. That'd be fantastic, man. Yep. Yeah. Well, we've been talking about it for a while, so I think I got the, the right company this time maybe to, to get behind us. Ah, uh, dude, I would love it. Awesome. I would love it. I love getting in the studio and making records. I don't do enough of them, man. I'm always, awesome. you know, I'm always out doing the live thing. Sure. Sure, sure. And uh, I actually got to do a bunch of bunch of rec, uh, studio stuff during the the pandemic, which was nice. And yes, live streaming stuff and studio environment stuff since right all on. the li- live stuff was closed. But uh, right, yeah, I love to. I, yeah, I look forward to it. That's I always great. love it. I always love it. That's great. But yeah, yeah. All right, man. Well, let's get you out of here. Get you on your way home. All my right, friend. man. So uh, everybody can catch you again over at Harrah's on right. Thursdays and Fridays. That's right, Thursday, Fridays, and also you could get. You know what? For the people that don't know about us, go on Big Elvis on Facebook. It's just Pete Valley Big Elvis on Facebook. Instagram is Big Elvis L V. That's L dot V Instagram. And I got that too right here. Okay, that's right. And then also we got BigElvis.org. That's the website. And that website's being worked on. We got a couple things coming up. Yeah, and it needs to be... It needs to be revamped, but we're working on that too. You can buy merchandise and all kinds of stuff through that. Most of our fans know that, but you might have a couple of people out here that don't know that. So yeah, join us. Join us on all these different things. If you're wondering what it's about, get on here. You'll get different uh, things that we're doing all the time. We're doing live stuff on. Uh, we're still doing a couple of feeds that we're going to be doing live from uh, on YouTube because I've got a couple thousand people on there and. We're going to put this on hit on there, and we're yes. going to put it on Facebook for our 10,000 people, and we're going to go to town. Hopefully, we get a bunch of hits on I'm sure we will. Yeah, I, I hope so. so, man. Yeah, awesome. and everything will be linked in the description below. And uh, definitely make sure you subscribe, give us a like, ring the bell, and follow us on social media at Space Frank Station. Join Jason. That's his it. crew, man. Yeah. Jason, I want to shake your hand, brother. Bro, thank it's you so much. It's been a much. pleasure. Thanks for having me on your yeah. beautiful podcast. I love what you're doing. He's got a lot of great stars on it. So, like I say, follow him. And I'm telling you this to my fans, follow my buddy Jason, and you're going to love his stuff. It's all inspirational and great stuff. Nice. And before we get out of here, I just want to uh, say an old Chinese proverb that Pete used to always tell me backstage, which is, uh, he who goes to bed with itchy butt wakes up with stinky fingers. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's so that I shit? remember that so well. It is so, uh, it's, but you know, if you think about it, you have to be careful because it's very true. It's very true. It's, it's, it's good it's, advice. It's very good advice. That's a very Chinese proverb. Oh, uh, yeah, man. <laughs> so, yeah, once again, it's been to the fullest. Peace. Awesome, man. Thanks for watching To The Fullest with Jason Froberg. You can check out more podcasts here and subscribe by clicking right here. We air new podcasts every Monday morning on Space Brain Station and all of your favorite podcast apps.